You know, sometimes I just have to admit that the best part of this job is at the end of the day when it's time for quality control. Can't beat that, can you? Well, good morning from Suburban Jessup. Uh, hope everybody's doing fine. It's been a while since I've had a video on, but we're going to get one made today. Today we're going to make a video of this cute little bulldog bottle opener. Last weekend I was at the Indiana State Fair and a good friend of mine, Bill Corey, showed me how he makes one of these. Uh, another friend had showed me, I don't know, probably a year ago or so how he made them. Uh, and so I thought I'd make a few of my own and maybe put a video together so that you folks could, uh, could make them also. So here's a close-up shot of him. He's a cute little fella. Takes a number of punches and chisels and things like that, uh, drifts to make this, and we're going to cover the punches and drifts as we go. Uh, so I hope you uh, find this video useful. I hope you find it entertaining. I hope you get some good out of it. So let's get started. Now he's made from one inch by quarter inch flat bar mild steel. Okay? So that's what we're going to make him out of. Now we're going to start out. with a 30 inch long bar, mainly because that way we don't have to use tongs and for those of you that are still kind of challenged by tongs, it'll make it easier for you. So that's what we're going to start with. So let's get this bar warmed up and let's get ready to start. Another thing is as we do this, I'm going to be covering the chisels, punches and drifts and fullers that I've made to ease in making this bulldog bottle opener and, and other different you know animals and creatures so we'll go one by one as we go along and I'll explain to you what I'm using okay first thing we want to do is we're going to come over we want to pick it up a little bit off the anvil we want to round the corners out working from both corners Now in this case, kind of want what we call the fish lips, if you can see them. The little divot there. I kind of want those on this. I don't really want it really round. But there. Okay, there we are. We've got it rounded up, and as you can see, it's got kind of a half moon to it, fish lips, but in this case we want the fish lips so we're going to leave it that way. So we're going to put it back in the fire and we're going to heat it back up. Now we're going to bring it out we're going to put about an inch and a quarter of it to an inch and a half over the edge of the anvil. We're going to bend it over, flip it over. Drop it down. Just like that. And that's our first fold. Okay. Now we're going to put it back in the fire. Now we're going to bring it up and once again. We're going to put it in an angle. And we're going to knock the sharp corners. This time we don't want too much of that. Fish lip, as we had before. I'm going to try to keep everything closed straight as we go. There we are. Just knock the corners off a little bit. Take that sharp edge off. Now this is the first video with the new Cole Forge. Uh, I made it about a month ago. Uh, it's twice as wide as the old Cole Forge. It's about the same depth. Uh, 
what I was really looking for was just a place to stack crap on both sides and that's exactly what it does now that I have more room as I stack, stack more crap on it. But anyway, it gives me more room for coal and miscellaneous junk and crap. Uh, I really like the setup. This one has the stock stand that comes out and goes back down. You can't really see it, but the blower's situated a little lower so I don't have to raise my hand quite as high. So now we're going to bring this out with the jaw facing up at us. We're going to come about an inch again, a little more, a little less. We're going to fold that over, play it on itself one more time. Now we want to put that right there. Hammer that down. Now if you look, we now have both our folds just like here. And there we are. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use, it's about a one inch by quarter inch four that I forged from spring steel, coil, coil spring steel. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to take it, we're going to isolate the mass for the ears. So what we're going to do right here and right here. So we come up here and we go from about the center of the top of the head at a 45 degree angle to isolate the mass for the ears. Now we have the mass isolated, if you look at it, there. So that's where our two ears are going to be. So we're going to set that back in the forge, and get it back up. Now we're going to bring that out. We're going to set the ear right on that groove. We're going to sit down on it. Okay, now we're going to come over here and put that one right there. We're going to set down on it. That gives us the start of our ears. Now we're going to change back to our regular forging hammer rather than using the ball pin. Now we're going to finish drawing the mirrors out. One side at a time. We're going to get it up against. I'm kind of using a push and blow. Pull that ear out. So there's our ears pulled out.
The next thing we want to do is we want to make the nose. Now the nose is made with this triangular shaped punch, if you can see it real good. Okay, now on this, this end here, on the drive end, you'll see a flat right here, and that tells me where the top of the nose is. Okay? So it's an index punch. Now I'm going to take him, make sure we get him indexed. I'm going to put that about right there, in the middle, draw it straight down. Now we're going to put it back in, we've got it started, we're going to put it back in, we're going to heat it up, we're going to change hammers again. I really don't like using the forging hammer to drive punches and chisels. Okay, we're going to bring them out. We're going to make sure we're indexed where we need to be. Right there. And there, I'm happy with the nose. So there's our nose. Now next, we're going to take this teardrop shape, if you can see it. It's a teardrop shaped punch. And once again, it's got a flat spot up here on top, on the drive end, so we know which way is up. But we're going to take this and we're going to put the nostrils in the nose. Now we're just going to take that, we're going to find our index on our punch, we're going to come up here on this side of the nose, we're going to come up here right next to it, right there. That way we have two nostrils. There we go. So there's our two nostrils if you can see them. So the next thing we want to do, we want to do his mouth. And to do his mouth, I forged another chisel with a radius on it. It's about probably a little over a half inch wide. Uh, the radius, uh, I don't know, you'll just have to take a guess. That's what I did. But basically what you want to do is you want to come up here and you want to put him in there. And then you turn it upside down and you go here and you go here to make his mouth. Now you don't need this at a great bright orange or yellow heat. I like it at a red heat so that I can see what I'm doing better. Now I want to get that just about in the middle. Now right now he's frowning at us. Now we take, we turn the chisel up the other direction. We 
Finish his mouth just like that. Now we just redo everything one more time. Just to make sure we got what we want. And there, if you can see it, there's his mouth. Put that back in the fire. Now we're going to take this small chisel. It's about, oh, I don't know, a half inch, maybe a little smaller. Got a little bit of a canoe shape to it. And we're going to connect the mouth and the nose, a little line between the mouth and the nose is what we're going to do. So we bring it up here, and all we're going to do is right here, between the nose and the mouth, we're going to put one slip. That's all we're going to do. And that's what that looks like. You can see that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put his eyes in. We're going to use our eye punch. Now the eye punch was shaped by tapering the punch and then Stand it up on end, heating it with a torch, and driving a center punch down into the center of the eye punch. And that's how it was formed. Come up here and I look where I want the eyeball. Make sure I'm in my in my hole where I was to start with. Now I rotate that punch. Now when you use that eye punch, you want to hold it down. And you want to keep turning it in circles. But you want to hold it down so it doesn't hop out. There's his eyeballs. Now he, now he has eyes if you can see them. Put him back in fire. Okay, now we're going to take and we're going to put a collar on him. And we do that. with a little larger radius chisel. It's probably an inch and a half wide, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But this is what I use to put the collar on. Right there. So I come up we're come down just below his chin on the long piece of the bar and I set it down. Now I make sure I'm back in my then I come down about a half an inch or so, maybe not quite a half inch I set it down again. I want to make sure I got good marks. Just like that. There it is. Now there's his collar. Okay. Can you see it there? That's his collar. Now, he wouldn't be a big, fierce puppy dog 
unless his collar has studs on it. So we've got this little center punch that we're going to use to put freckles on his face and to put studs on his collar. Okay? I'm going to brush it real good so we can see what we're doing. We'll start with the collar down here. Okay, now we're going to do his freckles. Not really freckles, I guess. I guess it's where his whiskers are. Just kind of a random pattern. Maybe some on his chinny chin chin. So now he has spikes on his collar, you can see those, and he has little whisker holes for his whiskers. So we have his collar, we have his facial features, we have his whisker holes, so now we're going to bend the ears over. We need to bend the ears over. Bring them up here. I just kind of start them over like that. Then I bring them up. I start bringing them on up. And there we have his ears brought over. Makes a big difference when you do that, doesn't it? So next we're going to start on slitting and drifting the hole for the bottle opener. Now you can slit it and drift it or you can slop punch it and drift it. Me personally I find it easier to slit it and drift it than I do slot punch it. Okay? So I slit it and drift it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to march center, mark center with my center gauge. If you haven't made one of these yet you really need to make one because it makes finding center real easy. Now you want to make sure you've got this punched in the center. So I take my center finder and I mark my center just like that. If you can see that. Now of course once I heat it up I'm not going to be able to see that. So I want to come up here and I'm going to come down probably about two inches, two and a half I'm not going to measure, but I am going to be in the center. Make sure I'm there. Now I got a good center punch, if you see that. Got a good center punch mark. We're going to put that back in the fire. We're going to heat that up and we're going to bring it out. We're going to slit it, okay? That's what we're going to do next.
This plate is a piece of spring steel with a couple of holes in it. I use it when I'm sledding to give me a place for my sledding chisel to go. Guess we should have had that already ready, huh? Now we're going to take that, we're going to put that in, the, in our punched hole, make, make sure we're straight, take a good look at it. We're straight. Okay. Now we're going to heat it up to a good orange shell heat. Okay, we're almost all the way through it. Put it over there. There we are. Okay. Let me get that back up. Now here's our punch that we the drift that we're going to drift that with. It's about a little more than three-eighths on this end and it comes out to three-quarter here at the widest point. Right now our uh, sled hole is not big enough for that so we're going to drive this center punch into that hole and open it up to where this will fit. Now I personally always like to drift from one side and preferably the side facing out. Okay, we got a good centered hole started. Now we're going to heat it back up and we're going to Finish opening it up for the drift. We're as far as we can go with our center punch now, so we're going to switch over to the regular drift now. So we do this over the hardy hole. We go from corner to corner while we're at it. Now we want to look at it and make sure we're centered. And we're fairly well centered. Now we want to flatten that back out. And track it while we're at it. You want that a good heat when you do that. You try to do that cold. To split it, crack it, break it. Somewhere around here I've got one. That's what happens when you get it too thin and too cold. It breaks. And then you got a puppy dog that will never open a bottle. Like I said, I like to drift it from one side. I don't like to go back and forth. I like to keep it on one side.
Once it starts getting cold, stop. Flatten them back out. Getting cold. out there. There we go. Now it's pretty well in the center if you look at it. It's not too bad. The next thing we want to do is we want to cut the bulldog and the bottle opener hole loose from the parent stock. And to do this we're going to use this radius chisel which is just about the same radius if you look as that outside of that bottle opener. So we're going to heat that up and we're going to do that. So we come up here and we come to the outside radius and then we go just a little past it because that chisel is beveled from back to front. And as it goes down, it actually works itself forward. So if you go right on the outer diameter of that bottle opener hole, you're going to end up with a little less. So there's our, our chisel hole, and there's our radius chisel. Now we're going to take that and put that back in the fire. Take that put that back in the fire. We're going to heat it up, and we're going to bring it over here, down out of the camera angle here, and we're going to break it off. We're going to take that, which we're going to put that right at. Slit there, and we're going to work it back and forth and break it off. We're going to put that in the water. So there he is, right there. Now we're going to heat him up and we're going to start working this part here around the horn of the anvil. First we want to flatten them out from the back side. So we start and we want to take them on and knock the gears off. Kind of getting cattywampus, we want to line it back up. Almost got it too hot that time, didn't it?
we're just about where we want to be with that one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to round it up. And we're going to knock the edges off of it, okay? When you do that, you want to work it all the way around. Yeah. And you want to take it, you want to start knocking the corners off of it all the way around. And I take it, and I turn around to this side. this point we're not looking too shabby okay so now we're gonna take a ball punch right here we're gonna make the little divot titty thing here that grabs a bottle cap. I suppose it's got a real name. I don't know what it is. So we're gonna make this little divot with this ball punch. That's probably about a about a three-eighths ball punch, maybe a little less. So we come up here, get our ball punch. We want it in the middle, we want to come back about a quarter of an inch or so with the first initial. And we want to work our way forward, slowly. To get our debit. And there's our divot for a bottle opener. Okay. Now we want to heat that up one more time. Now when I made this one yesterday, I didn't get the oval the way I normally do. And I'm probably going to push this over on down. Now, this is one I made from three quarter by quarter the other day. And the distance between your little divot there, teddy, whatever you want to call it, and the top, my thumb just barely fits in there. And that's what I go by. And then I also Tilt it back a little bit. Same way as the face, so when you go to open it up, it's a little more comfortable to me. I want to make sure the tongs are on there straight. I'm going to bring it up here. Just want to come straight down. Okay, we're not looking too bad. Said so we're about the width of my thumb. 
And I'll go stick my thumb in there. So we got a couple more last minute adjustments. And then we'll be done and we'll be ready for the cleanup. First thing we want to do is we want to bend that fold just a little bit. And when I want to come up here, just put a little bit of a dead right there. Okay, now we're going to heat the whole thing up and water brush it real good. And get ready to call it done. So we're just going to water brush it real good. So that's how we make the Bulldog bottle opener. I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Um, all we're going to do with him now is we're going to hit him with some clear coat. We've cleaned him up. We've got our initial stamped in it. Uh, like I said, I hope you had some good use out of it. Uh, if you did, like it and share it with all your friends. You folks be safe out there, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye.